Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Cocktails and Conversation. Today, I am joined by Beth Carter, who is the founder and chief strategist at Clarion Creative, a full-service inbound marketing agency, and she is based near Chicago, Illinois. So welcome, Beth. Cheers Thank to you. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, of Cheers. course. Thank you for joining. So I met Beth through the HubSpot Agency Partner Mentorship Program, and she has just been a huge inspiration to me as a small two-person agency. She has so much knowledge and wisdom and is motivating me to see where I can take my agency someday. So Beth, tell us a little bit about Clarion Creative and how you got started and what makes you so passionate about inbound marketing and content creation? Oh, wow. So uh, I actually started my agency about five years ago after spending 15 years as a freelance writer. And as a freelance writer, I wrote all kinds of content and worked for several different inbound marketing agencies. And, you know, after doing anything for 15 years, you're kind of ready for a change. So um, I was looking for something different, some way to grow my business, but to grow my business, it had to be more than just me, myself, and I running the business. And around that time, I got, um, uh, I came into contact with somebody at the HubSpot agency program and kind of all the pieces fell into place. And so I started, I had been building networks for years of other freelancers and, and, uh, pulled together that network. And, um, and here we are five years later, uh, as Clarion Creative. So we, um, because my background is, is writing. We focus very heavily on the content marketing aspect of inbound marketing. And um, yeah, we, it's been a wild ride. We're excited to be here. Wonderful. I'm so happy for you. Congratulations on all your success. You. Your website says, and I love this, that you help businesses create clarity in their marketing, which I think is something that is so necessary all the time, but especially right now. And I think a lot of brands and businesses may be struggling with what do I post? How do I be sensitive to what's going on? How do I continue to be visible and connect with my clients and customers? So how have you been guiding your clients through this time? And what advice do you have for what types of how to be sensitive to what's going on in, in the content that you're posting? Yeah, it's so like so many things in marketing, a lot of this depends on your individual business, right? But for example, one of our clients, um, they are in the health and wellness space. And one of the things that they've been trying to be very mindful of with their content is they don't want to keep repeating the COVID-19, COVID-19. They, right. In fact, they're trying to stay optimistic, but also be realistic. So when we're writing content for this, this particular client around um, uh, you know, how to maintain wellness in your employees when they're working from home, we're not, everybody understands the context around why people are working from home. And maybe right. in the content we're positioning it as, you know, during, you know, these crazy times or, or just even in general, you know, when your employees are working from home, here's how to approach it, right? So we're acknowledging the circumstances without hitting people over the head with everything that's going on. Um, that's been working really well for that one particular client. I, I will say we have another client who has seen this as an opportunity um, to really pivot a, a whole aspect of their business. Um, this particular client provides consulting services for hospitals, and they realized that with this whole crisis that we're living through, uh, a whole new category of services, telehealth services, is suddenly in really, really yeah. important for the hospitals. And so they saw this, this gap, but it, telehealth has always been around for a while, but it isn't quite as mainstream as it is like right now, right? Right. Um, so my client saw this, this gap and we were able to really quickly create a bunch of how-to content that could help their clients get started with this, this crisis, right? And my client even was very upfront about this. They, you say, you know, they were projecting that in six months, a year from now, it's probably going to go back much more to, to normal with that. So, so mm -hmm. acknowledging that this is some short-term content that we're producing, but nonetheless, right now, it's filling this huge need. So I think that is actually, maybe that's the perspective that, that businesses should take is, you know, what is it that my audience, my buyers, my customers, my clients, however you phrase it, what is it that they really need to hear right now? Maybe it's optimism, maybe it's help with their own businesses, how to pivot or their own, you know, lives, how to pivot. But if whatever you're doing, if you're putting your, your buyer, your customer first, 
But that's the most important thing. Everything else falls into place. I love that. Be optimistic, but realistic. I love that line. I think for me as a consumer of content and a creator of content, it does get overwhelming to constantly hear, you know, it's always in the news, it's everywhere you look. And I want to, of course, I want to be updated on it, but I also want that positivity and that encouragement that, you know, we are going to get through this. And I do think that things may shift long term. So doing these, you know, to-do list pieces of content or pivoting and adjusting, I think it's a good, it's a good lesson for, for businesses because there are, there'll always be something to have to adjust to or pivot to. And it's a great kind of growth experience for, for all of us to know, okay, how do we prepare for the next thing that may come along and, and have content that is always relevant, that'll last forever. One of the generals, Eisenhower maybe, and hopefully people, somebody listening to this is smarter than I, that knows which general it was, but somebody, the, the saying is something to the effect of plans are useless, but planning is invaluable. I'm butchering that, but that's oh. kind of like an idea, right? So, you know, it's you, something like coronavirus hits and whatever your plan was for your business, that goes out the window. But the act of planning and even in the act of, of you building whatever the original plan was, um, Thinking through those processes is, is what separates the, you know, the, the good from the bad and the wheat from the chaff and all of that. So uh, the fact that you're thinking about how to pivot your business and how to help your customers pivot in whatever way they need to, it, the, that process is what's going to, you know, guide you through this, right? Because right. it's not, you're not just, so another thing that I just read was, it, it's not just that you're playing not to lose, you're playing to win. You're, you're in this for the long term, you know? Right. So it, it really is. Your mindset is a year from now, not exactly you know, a week from now. Yeah, I was recently on a marketing webinar and I was, I brought up the point that I've always come from a place that your content should be, you know, authentic and intentional and thoughtful. And it's been interesting to watch the world adjust to that because a lot of businesses are having to be authentic and thoughtful and purposeful right now because of what's going on. And I feel that that's how it always should be, you know, before this, during this and after this. So I'm hoping that this adjustment and this shift and this pivot continues in the long term for brands and businesses so that they do put their consumers and their customers first and realize that that's the content that they should be creating. Yeah. Well, and the flip side is you can't, in, in difficult times, you can't be lazy about any of this, right? Right. So you've got to be really um, purposeful and, and meaningful in everything that you do. Yeah, exactly. We were chatting about the fact that we both already work from home before this. We can see you have your lovely home office. So that was kind of kind of a blessing that we already were adjusted to that format. I know a lot of people are having to work from home that never did before and it's a big adjustment. What has been the biggest challenge or adjustment for you during this time? And how yeah, have you so, overcome that? So like you said, with the, from the get-go, our agency has been remote, 100% remote. We don't have a, a central office. All of my team, uh, full-time employees, but they're all over, all over the country and even we have one in Canada. Um, uh, so for us, this, this is business as usual. <laughs> There's really no difference yeah. <laughs> in how we operate, right? Um, the biggest adjustment, I think, is just uh, to the, the fact that everybody, kind of what we were talking about, that everybody, even if that we are still operating as normal, there is, the reality is that there is crazy stuff going on in the world right now, mm -hmm. and everybody um, adjusted it differently. And so as, as the leader of the agency, as the head of the agency, recognizing that, you know, each, everyone on my team is, is um, reacting to, to all of this craziness in their own unique way. And it might be the same as what I'm reacting to. It might be different from my own reaction and that's all okay. And so to try to encourage all of that in a way that's healthy, but also doesn't devolve into, um, you know, just like wallowing or being non-productive but you know how do we channel all of that and and cope and grieve and and uh, uh you know still plan for the future and still look ahead and still get all the stuff done so we're figuring it out day to day i recently saw a quote 
along those same lines, and I'm going to butcher the quote, of course, but it said something along the lines of, you're not working from home, you're at home trying to work during a crisis. Yeah. So I think that you know, there are times where I have trouble finding motivation and I'm like, I've always, I've been working from home forever. How, how am I not motivated or inspired right now? And we have to remember to be kind to ourselves and, and be okay with not being okay. That's something that I've had to learn because I've always been a very self-motivated person and it's been a strange adjustment, you know, having to give myself the permission to have a bad day or check out early if I need to for my mental health. And I think it's, the conversation around mental health in the workplace has been great too. I think that it's something that is always important and I'm, I'm happy to see it uh, discussed a lot more right now. What has been your, you know, we're talking about essential items and essential businesses and we've had to scale back uh, our trips to the grocery store and what we can purchase. What have you realized during this time has been something that you cannot live without while you're at home? Uh, well, cocktails help. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they sure do. That has been a, a, a common answer, I've noticed. <laughs> uh, you know, it's uh, so just by sheer luck, shortly before the whole stay at home, you know, all the states started requiring everybody to stay at home. Um, and I have, I have three children, but they're older. So I have a, a high school student and two college students. And suddenly, all of us are, you know, they're doing online learning and I'm still running my business online. My husband also works from home and he, so he's out, you know, we, we use a lot of bandwidth. So fortunately, right before all of this broke loose, we had a technician out, um, we were having problems with the internet and, and he fixed a bunch of things on the Wi-Fi, and it was, it wasn't for any like sure plan. We just got lucky with that. And, and so we've been okay with the, the Wi-Fi, but that would be if we didn't have that, like, oh my gosh, my, everything would grind to a halt. You know, I've got people, one poor guy on my team had to, he was like driving around trying to find a Wi-Fi spot strong enough so that he could download something. And we we're trying to, he was trying to um, download a video and he couldn't download it because it took too much bandwidth. So, you know, that's, it's, it's just ridiculous how much we all rely on something yes. as simple as Wi-Fi, right? Exactly. Well, I'm glad you got that fixed before this all happened. <laughs> like somebody was looking out for me. Yes. Has there been a brand or a business that you've seen uh, that you've been impressed by or inspired by that's pivoted well or done something really cool during this time? So, yeah, I think any of the brands where the leadership has made the right choices where, so I'm thinking like the, um, the CEO of Columbia, you know, the outdoor clothing mm -hmm. and outdoor equipment company. Um, I understand that the CEO of, of Columbia is, I, I don't know if he's completely foregoing his entire salary or, or taking a pay cut or what, but he's, he is taking the pain so that the company can keep some of their employee, you know, more employees employed and, and not have to furlough as many people. And I love that in terms of the, you know, living your values as a company. So Absolutely. any of those companies where, you know, you see somebody and, and it's just wonderful. And so, you know, that's like, and then the, you know, the opposite of that is as relevant. All the, you know, the Ruth Chris and the Shake Shack, I guess they, yeah. they give that and whatever, but like, you know, um, or I, I, there's a, a, the CEO of one of the, the health insurance companies was last week bragging about how, bragging is maybe not the right word, but he's talking about how they're, it's going to be a really good year for the health insurance companies because they're all collecting all of our health insurance premiums, but none of the hospitals are delivering any of the services. So this is like total profit for them. So he's like, oh yeah, we haven't had to lay off anybody. And you know, but that's on the backs of the entire U.S. working population. Right. It's, it, you know, it's uh, not right. And uh, yeah. so I am in strong admiration of any of those brands that are doing right right now and uh, you know, gonna do what I can to try to continue to support those brands. Yeah, I, I definitely think that this experience is going to show which companies truly take care of their employees and truly care about their customers. And you know, being, you know, corporate social responsibility is a buzzword, but we're really gonna start seeing that come into play now or, or not, like you said. Um, mm -hmm. I was disappointed in the Ruth's Chris thing too, because I, I loved, loved that restaurant. They have a great happy hour, but now that I saw that, I probably won't be supporting them. If they did give that loan back, but still the damage was already done. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and I mean, 
you can dissect it and I guess I kind of understand what their thought process was when they were doing it, but it was just, it came out, it, it resulted in them looking very tone deaf, right? You know, yeah. not paying attention to the people who, who really needed the money. And yeah, you can go back and forth over that. Like I get it, but at the end of the day, Yeah. Well, speaking of supporting businesses, how can we all support your business during this time? Where can we find you online? Where are you posting your content? Yeah, so uh, we are on LinkedIn, Twitter, and Facebook. I, I, am, <laughs> I am told we have an Instagram account, but I am <laughs> embarrassingly inept at, at Instagram, so don't, don't ask me for details. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, or, or visit us at clarionecreative.com uh, and we publish all our stuff there too. So. Well, I want to thank you, Beth, not only for joining us today, but for being such an inspiration to me and for always having wonderful content that inspires me and motivates me to want to put out content, not copy your content, but put out great content like you do. You, not just during this time, but prior to this, you always have such relevant, thoughtful content and uh, we'll obviously share all the links so people can check out your content and download all your amazing ebooks and all that good stuff. So thank you. Thank you, well, Beth. you guys are doing amazing work too. I love thank you. this whole setup. So cheers Yay. to that. Cheers to you. Thank you, Beth. Thank you.